The Zone. A place notorious for its dangers. Death by anomalies, bullet wounds or mutant bites is commonplace here. However, there is a particular phenomenon that is arguably much worse. Psy emissions. Hello stalkers and welcome to the anomalous dugout. In this video we will take a close look at the terrible psy fields, their effects, origins, and many other interesting lore details. While the exact nature of psy missions and psy fields remains a mystery, their effects on people are quite well known. Effectively, a psy field is the accumulation of psy missions into a specific area. Upon entering such a location, one will fall under the influence of the emissions, and depending on the intensity of the field as well as the length of exposure, will experience the following symptoms. Dizziness, headaches, auditory and visual hallucinations, and eventually permanent damage to the psyche leading to madness or, in the worst cases, zombification. Professor Sakharov described it as follows. It's the Psy field. Everyone who is affected by it loses his mind and turns into a zombie. This happens as a result of irreversible damage to the higher functioning of the human brain. Ergo, these creatures cease being human. They have no cognitive abilities, and so their behavior is the result of whatever remains of their purely animal instincts. As you can imagine, this fate is often considered to be worse than death. The zombified stalkers will continue to wander the zone, slowly losing more of their abilities and decaying into living corpses. Going back to the emissions themselves, they are especially dangerous because they are almost invisible, meaning that usually stalkers only realize there is a psi field when they have already worked inside. Indeed, the presence of psi missions can be detected through the visual impairments they inflict. These were represented by a yellowish tint in both Shadow of Chernobyl and Clear Sky, and a bluish tint in Call of Pripyat. In rare cases, psi fields were able to create mutant hallucinations for the player to fight. These are referred to as phantoms, and only appeared thrice in the trilogy as we'll see a bit later in the video. Moreover, a forgotten and half-broken mechanic of so-called psi health was present in Shadow of Chernobyl, but it was removed in the following games. Have you ever noticed this blue bar in the inventory next to the health bar? This is marked one psychological health. The idea was that this health would decrease when affected by a psi field and if it reaches zero, the character succumbs to the emissions. It's an interesting concept because it means that regular medkits cannot cure this psi damage, as this special health only regenerates with time. This prospect would make psi fields much more threatening, as the player could not simply spam medkits in order to survive. Unfortunately, this psi health concept was only partially implemented, only working in the case of the field generated by a controller. It does not work with other fields, such as the one in Yentor or the Red Forest, which simply take out regular health. Then the ID was scrapped for Clear Sky and Call of Pripyat, but who knows, maybe something similar will come back in Heart of Chernobyl. It should be mentioned that scientists did develop ways for stalkers to protect themselves from psi emissions. The psi block is a long-lasting drug which increases resistance to psi aggressions, with the side effect of emotion loss during the timing of effect. A few prototypes of psi protection helmets were also built by Professor Sakharov, soon proving to be extremely valuable to the user. A similar technology was adapted to various other models of helmets in the form of upgrades, the best of which being the Psydome Band. Alternatively, there are some artifacts of electrical nature which can provide a bit of protection against psi fields. Now, perhaps you have wondered what the prefix psi actually means. It's a very interesting question that sent me down a rabbit hole which is deeply connected to both the in-game origins of psi missions and the real-life sources of inspiration used by the developers to create them. 
At first glance, it appears that Psy could mean psychic or psychological, that is, having to do with the mind. This is particularly appropriate when talking about mutants, such as the controller, which can be described as having psychic abilities. However, it is clear that the Psy missions actually have an effect beyond the mind, since exposure seems to also have physical consequences. If we take a look at the design documents for both Stalker, Oblivion Lost and Anarchy Cell, the games that would become Shadow of Chernobyl and Clear Sky respectively, we learn that Psy is in fact the contraction of psychotropic, which means having an effect on the mind. The docs explain that research on psychotropic weapons was carried out in the zone's secret laboratories alongside research on the noosphere, which we can assume resulted in the creation of psimeters such as the infamous brain scorcher. Unfortunately, the word psychotropic does not seem to appear in the final games, or at least not exactly. The only in-game mention I could find on the topic comes from the PDA of Vasiliev, Sakharov's colleague who was working on the Lab X16 case. Quote, the intended purpose of this project is the full-scale development of psychotronic weapons with a huge area of effects. The word psychotronic does not really exist in the English dictionary, but it does relate to the concept of psychotronics, described as a synonym to paranormal psychology and basically a combination of the words psychotropic and electronics. This was an idea developed throughout the second half of the 20th century, according to which electronic devices could be used to create special signals of concentrated energy able to affect the mind at a distance, basically telekinesis via machines. During the Cold War, rumors circulated about psychotronics being a subject of military research, obviously with the goal of weaponizing this technology to remotely affect the mind of the enemy. Furthermore, it is said that experiments regarding mind control on animals and humans were conducted in the Soviet Union, for example by the neurologist Vladimir Mikhailovich Bekterev. According to the Zone Chronicles Encyclopedia, aka the Russian Stalker Wiki, it was Bekterev who first used the term of Siamission, although I am not sure if this information is legit. Lastly, there is the famous story of the Duga Radar, the so-called Russian woodpecker, that is located within the vicinity of Chernobyl. For a long time, the antenna was suspected by many to be a mind control device. All of these elements seem to have been used by GSC Gameworld as a source of inspiration when creating the concept of psi missions and psi meters for the Stalker games. To conclude on this matter, it appears the prefix psi is generally a contraction of the word psychotropic, but in some cases where the source of the emissions is a machine, it could also mean psychotronic. This leads us to the fact that there are different types of psi missions, depending on the nature of its source, known as the emitter. Chronologically, the first type of emitter that appeared within the world of Stalker was artificial in nature. These are man-made special machines, known as Kamenov emitters, the detailed technical characteristics of which are unknown. The word Kamenov was mentioned twice in Shadow of Chernobyl, first by Mark Twain himself in his journal when talking about what he found in Lab X18, and second by Barkeep, who confirmed that the Brain Scorcher is indeed a Kamenov emitter after taking a look at the same X18 documents. It can be assumed that Kamenov is the name of a scientist who built this technology. In fact, Kamenov appears in one of the documents from the Stalker 2 ARG, confirming that this is indeed the name of a scientist who worked in the zone. I won't spend too much time on this because this is not the main topic of the video, but basically, the document reveals that Kamenov was involved in the Over the Horizon radar project, known as the Duga Antenna. Then at some point during the research, it was discovered that psi missions could also be generated by biological means. 
Such information was found in Lab X8. Quote, the documents refer to one of the site discoveries of the research, specifically the discovery that living creatures are able to generate directed psi emissions. A biological field emitter, essentially a giant brain, was grown as part of the research conducted in Lab X16. So, while the emitter under Yantar is definitely of artificial nature, it does use biological matter as its main functioning principle instead of electronics. This is also backed up by the X16 documents retrieved on Ghost, the description of which mentioning that you'd need a degree in biology to understand a word of what it says. Similarly, controllers were artificially created within the secret laboratories, but are a prime example of living biological cymeters. The last type of cymission source is neither electronic nor biological. Rather, it is anomalous in nature. Indeed, following the second disaster in 2006, anomalies and artifacts started to appear, among which we find anomalous psychotropic phenomenons and objects. Now that the three types of psi emission sources have been explained, let's take a look at all the different emitters and psi fields present in the trilogy. The most famous installation is without a doubt the Brain Scorcher, composed of five Kamenov antennas with the official designation of Rainbow Emitter. Established within the Red Forest, the Scorcher had prevented stalkers from reaching the center of the zone for a long time, as anyone trying to get through would be affected by powerful psi emissions. However, some people did manage to bypass it using underground tunnels, and eventually the machine was shut down by the legendary Strelok, who wore one of the special psi protection helmets created by Professor Sakharov. The psi effects of the brain scorcher were among the strongest, being able to fry human brains at long distances in a matter of seconds. Even with the Psy protection equipped, we experienced mutant hallucinations called phantoms when approaching the compound, a very rare phenomenon in the trilogy. Another interesting thing about the brain scorcher is the fact that the mechanism does not always operate at full intensity. The power is regularly decreased in order to cool down the device, as revealed in several PDA entries. Moving on to the biological emitter in Laboratory X16, formerly established to study the potential of living matter to produce psi fields. Despite being located underground, this so-called psi brain was able to turn everyone in the vicinity of the Yendar factory into zombies. Much like the Scorcher, the apparatus here had periods of reduced power for cooldown. According to stash descriptions from Clear Sky, it was even possible to enter the factory relatively safely during such times. Although the cooling mechanism was prone to malfunctions, rendering the psi field extremely unstable. This resulted in unpredictable bursts of psi emissions, similar to small localized blowouts, as experienced in both Clear Sky and Shadow of Chernobyl. Ultimately, the emitter was disabled by none other than Strelok. Continuing on the topic of biological emitters, we have the controller. As its name suggests, this mutant is able to generate a small psi field around itself, which it uses to take control of its enemies' minds. Alternatively, the controller can attack using powerful concentrated psi missions on the condition that it has a direct line of sight with its target. Among the controllers found in the trilogy, two in particular stand out. The first in Call of Pripyat, at the Dangerous Cave, that was able to telepathically send a warning to Major de Tyref. Leave here, man. The second in Clear Sky, within the Agroprom Underground, who created such powerful emissions that phantom hallucinations were experienced by Scar. The controller is not the only mutant gifted with psychic abilities. There is also the Psy Dog. This rare variation of the pseudo dog utilizes psi emissions in a more subtle way, 
It cannot turn people into zombies, but instead tricks their minds into believing there are several more dogs attacking, when in reality it's only one. Effectively, the mutant creates telepathic doubles of itself, building a small pack that will overcome any poor soul that may trespass in its territory. Sliding to the side of the anomalous psi fields, the most common psi anomaly is known as the psi column, or psi disruption in Pilot's book. It is basically a spot of land above which a concentrated psi field is present, without the need for a specific emitter. This anomaly is extremely dangerous, though it can easily be spotted due to the strong deformations it causes within the air. Probably the most violent side disruption was found at the Symbiont Anomaly in the Red Forest. This particular psi field was stronger than the other psi columns, so much so that it is the only one able to produce phantom hallucinations. Another source of psi field anomalous in nature was the altered insulator, basically an old part of electrical machinery turned into a unique, unstable artifact by the zone. This object was most likely at the origin of an intermittent psi field in the vicinity of Yanov Station. I guess it is a good time to mention that electric type anomalies and psi fields seem to have some sort of affinity for one another. You will often find the two paired together, and some artifacts born from the electro provide with protection from psi missions. Maybe this is because psi missions are electromagnetic in nature, but we don't really know. Have you ever heard about the horror from Pripyat? No? Well, if you've played Call of Pripyat, you probably came across this entity without realizing it. While we are trying to sort things out for the military trapped in the ghost city, several soldiers will go missing. The first recon squad was wiped out in mysterious circumstances. Then there's this sentry who turns crazy and shoots himself. The scene makes us believe that the controller was responsible. The monster is dealt with, so normally we should not run into this problem again. Well, behold, later on another squad is unexplicably decimated, with only Lieutenant Rogovets managing to survive. He does not remember what happened, all he knows is that he was very scared, ran for his life and found a hiding spot in a fridge. This could be the end of it, but no. During the evacuation, the team will be hit by a strange psi field coming from seemingly nowhere. At this moment, Rogovets will fall to his knees. It's here. What is here, you may ask? The horror from Pripyat, that's what it is. Possibly half mutant, half anomaly, this invisible entity was planned during the development of the game, but in the end, only the consequences of its attacks were seen. Most likely, it was this horror from Pripyat that was responsible for all the mysterious deaths in the military ranks, as well as scaring Rogovets so much. Now, let's go back to electronic emitters, shall we? In Call of Pripyat still, three small portable psi machines could be found. One inactive, hidden in the Jupiter factory, another also inactive at the bookstore in Pripyat. It was set up atop a pile of trash by members of the monolith, who used it as an altar for prayer. From their complaints, we understand that the device used to transmit them the orders of the monolith, but it has remained silent after the crystal was deactivated. The third one was inside the kindergarten, and was still active. Connected to a makeshift antenna, it produced a relatively weak psi field around the building, while also serving as a jammer for nearby communications. This type of device was also seen in the Come To Me trailer for Stalker 2, where it appears deactivated in this scene, and more importantly, in full action in this scene. It looks like the apparatus is giving the Monolithian the upper hand in his fight against the Wardens and the protagonist. Overall, all signs point toward this type of emitter to be some sort of transmitter for the Monolith, both weakening its enemies and strengthening its fanatic servants. Which leads me to the Monolith itself. 
While the crystal is never directly referenced as a side device in game, it is clear that it possesses similar characteristics. Everything you have said about the monolith is true. All of it. It is just an illusion manufactured in a lab next to the sarcophagus. And nobody, nobody who reached the monolith has ever come back. It looks like they have died there. As the Sea Consciousness representative also explained, the Wish Granter was only a trick, a bait for stalkers who would try to make their deepest desires come true. In reality, it appears the monolith device was a very advanced type of scimitar, capable of sending messages into human minds at long distances, calling them to it. What you want is here, Stalker. Come. During the rush to the center of the zone, NPCs of various factions will mention hearing the voice of the Wish Granter in their head. Also, despite the fall of the brain's culture, stories about people losing their minds and strong telepathic forces being felt close to the power plant could be heard. Besides, the whole deal about Clear Sky's last mission was to disable Strelok's side protection at the CNPP, right? It only makes sense to do it if a side field was present there. In my opinion, this is an indication that the monolith is a type of side device on its own, or at least there are other side emitters present at the CNPP. Perhaps these mysterious dishes have something to do with it. And in case you are still not convinced, the design documents clearly describe the existence of three Psy units for the player to overcome. The first is the Psy Brain in Lake Yantor, the second is the Brain Burner in the Red Forest, and the third is the Monolith Control Center covering the power plant. Alright, time to go full circle and get back where everything began. Laboratory X-18. Indeed, despite not featuring any Psy field, X-18 is the place where every Stalker player first learned about Psy missions, and more specifically, the experiments connected to it as well as Kamenov emitters. In one of the PDA entries gathered from the place, we can read about the nature of the experiments. Living test subjects were exposed to various types of Psy missions. It is my belief that this process was carried out using small-scale psychotronic emitters, which are most likely these strange devices seen inside X-18. More information was found in documents from another lab called X-8. Quote, the report details the study of biological samples sent from lab X-18. The samples were subjected to informational field effects of varying intensities. The report meticulously describes the mutation of living beings following exposure to emissions. Matching this experiment description with the earlier lab report from X-18 seems to indicate that psi fields are actually a type of informational field, which means psi emissions are definitely connected to the noosphere. As a small reminder, the noosphere is the informational field surrounding the Earth, which is responsible for sustaining the anomalous zone due to a rift created by mistake by the scientists of the group. Going even further, another paper from X8 reveals that it was thanks to an unexplained distortion of a psi field during an experiment that the existence of the noosphere was proven. Basically, this means that the research was first focused on psychotropic weapons, which led to the use of psi missions, which in turn led to the discovery of the noosphere. Besides, it looks like the interactions between psi missions and the noosphere can go both ways. The informational field can affect psi fields, and psi fields can affect the noosphere. Another important thing described in the documents is the effects of these fields on the living test subjects. Some of them simply had their brains fried, but mostly they suffered terrible mutations. Without much surprise, it was the exposure to such emissions that created the first mutants. 
since we previously demonstrated that psi emissions and the noosphere are connected. It is certainly possible that conditions similar to those that created mutants inside the labs could be met in certain places at certain times within the zone, explaining why new mutants are regularly created. Moreover, blowouts are also often described as having psychotropic effects. While they are clearly different from psi emissions and do not turn people into zombies, it is now obvious that they share something in common with the psi fields. The description of the antibiotics, a medicine that can help survive a blowout, further supports these discoveries. At its core, the drug contains tetrodotoxin, known colloquially as zombie powder, which causes a complete shutdown of the body's central nervous system that may allow people to survive emissions outside cover. Before ending this already long video, there is one last thing I want to discuss. With everything previously said in mind, we shall conclude by taking a look at the nature of psi missions. In game, they are sometimes referred to as radiation. This appears in several stash descriptions in both Clear Sky and Shadow of Chernobyl, for the area of Yentar, but also the Brain Scorcher, as well as in the mission Take radiation measurements, where you escort Krugloff or Semenov to take readings in order to calibrate the Psi helmet. You could think this is a mistake or due to stalkers confusing Psi fields for radioactive hotspots, but I don't believe this is the case. The term radiation does not necessarily refer to radioactivity. In physics, Radiation is the phenomenon linked to the emission or transmission of energy through void or matter in the form of either waves, particles, or both. It includes, but is not limited to, electromagnetic waves and radioactive particles. We've seen before that psi fields seem to have a special connection with electrotype anomalies, giving some sort of credibility to the theory that they are similar to electromagnetic waves. The term psi waves is used quite a lot in the design documents, but only once in-game, within the description of the reworked Moonlight artifact. Quote, this unique electrostatic artifact can resonate under the influence of psi waves. Stalkers have learned to fine-tune the artifact so that it resonates in opposite phase to the main source of emissions, thus fully or significantly neutralizing their effects. This description makes it clear that psi emissions are actually a type of wave, or at least they behave in a very similar way. So, what do you believe psi emissions actually are? Radiation? Electromagnetic waves? Something else? Let me know in the comments. As for myself, I certainly hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. I'll see you in the next one. Remember to avoid psi fields, take care, and goodbye.